God has brought us together for something bigger, which is on the other side of the storm. We need one another. We just thank you this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve all the honor, glory, and praise. You are a worthy Father, Jesus Christ. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. We thank you for giving us breath, Jesus Christ. You are worthy of our praises, Lord. We come before you this morning just lifting the almighty name up high. Thank you for being the Alpha, the Omega, the First, the Last, the Kings of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Lord. You are worthy. And right now, all we can do is just praise you and just worship you and just us you're in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Before we do anything, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, because you are, Heavenly Father, whoever we need you to be, Jesus Christ. You are amazing, Jesus Christ. You are wonderful, Heavenly Father. And most importantly, you are worthy of all of our praises. Thank you so much for a tongue that can worship you, Heavenly Father. We lift up your name, Jesus. We pray that that everything we do today honors and glorifies you, Jesus Christ. We are looking at you, Lord. We are not looking at distractions. We lift you up, Jesus Christ. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. And at the end of the day, we hope that everything that we do is pleasing to you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's worship him, church. Let's worship him, church. Let's give him the time that he deserves in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now let's continue to worship him in song. Amen. Glory to the king. Yes. We serve a God. 
God whose power never ends, it never stops. God, we thank you for continuing to work in the body of Christ all over the world. We thank you today. Hallelujah. You make the blind man see. You make the lame man walk again. You cause the dead to rise. That's why we dance in liberty. Cause you're doing it all again. Hey! We celebrate him. Cause you're doing it all again. Walk again. You cause the dead to rise. That's why we dance in liberty.
a blessing to be able to call the creator Abba. For those who don't have a father, for those who do have a father, but maybe he's absent, God is always there. He's always there and we can always call on him. You're more real than the ground I'm standing on. You're more real than the wind in my lungs. Thoughts define me. You're inside me. You're
Yes, he is. At the end of the day, God is amazing. Yes. He's great. He's loving. He's kind, thoughtful, long-suffering. And one of the things I want to do here, even, even as, as a pastor, Abba, you know, when I was young and I would make a mistake, in fact, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was um, set our bathroom on fire. <laughs> and what happened was I saw the flames, and it's a long story, well, it's a short story, but let me get to the point. And immediately, you know what I did? Daddy! And that's what Abba Father is all about. Yes. Paul talks to us yes. about that in Romans. He talks to us about that in, um, in Galatians. Abba. You know, my God children call me Baba. Okay, Baba, Baba. And whenever they want something, trust me, they, they, they are messenger now. And they will bypass their mother and father. <laughs> Baba, I want this. Baba, we want this. Can we? Can we? And so Abba is a term of endearment. And when you really come into the kingdom, knowing who God is, he's loving, long-suffering, gentle, kind. And that's his name is Abba. He's not some God that's afar off. Somebody just waiting to drop a hammer on us whenever we make a mistake. No, no, no. We cry, Abba, Father. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. Just so grateful, dear Lord God. So grateful. So grateful. So kind. So long-suffering. You're just so amazingly awesome to us. So merciful. And we just say thank you, dear Lord God. So we come this morning, just Holy Spirit, have your way. Manifest yourself so strongly in our service. We just thank you for your divine presence. You are the comforter. And we thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Father, we love and we honor you. And again, we say thank you for this opportunity to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I don't know amen. if I ever told you the story about me burning down the bathroom, no, did I? Did yeah. There, no, that's one of those stories you want to forget. <laughs> okay. But I do recall, really though, um, and, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. My name is Tony Dunn. I'm the senior pastor here at New Day Christian Fellowship. I'm also the bishop over the New Day Global Network. And this is my wife, lovely wife, Jackie. Good morning, everyone. And we just want to say welcome. We yes. just want to say welcome. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but I did set that. I was think I was nine years old and playing with matches. Hey, and um, uh, bathroom caught on fire. But immediately I called my daddy. And daddy came running. He came running in. He, I remember so clearly, took the trash can in the bathroom, dumped the trash out, and uh, put it in the bathtub, ran the water in it, and began to just immediately. So he knew what to do. Yes. So yes. I would encourage you all. You may, may, maybe it's been a while since you've really just cried out to God, but whatever your situation is, yeah, just, just Abba. Abba. Amen? Yes. In fact, I know you really like that song, don't you? I do. I love that song because... Um, my father was very special to me, and when I think of my heavenly father, I think of how much more he loved me than my natural father. My natural father tried to give me everything I needed and everything I wanted, but my heavenly father gives me internally everything I need, and he wants to give that same thing to you. And so I, want, I just, uh, just call out to Abba Father. Tell, call him, because he's there. He wants you to call out to him. He wants your heart. He wants your body. He wants your soul. He wants to fulfill you completely and give you all the dreams and desires you want aligned with his word and his will. So he is there for you. And we are also there for you. So we want you to text us at, nine, at 94000. What are they texting? They're texting 940. No, no, no. Do they connect? Oh, text New Day Connect <laughs> at 94000. That's New Day Connect at 94000. Hey, the beautiful thing about our church, you can make mistakes and yes, still be loved. Yes, okay? we love Amen. You. <laughs> we we are grace. a church of grace and mercy. Glory yes. to God. In fact, welcome to New, New Day. Day. <laughs> Amen. Welcome to New Day. family. I'm excited to be with you guys again today and uh, just excited about all this happening here at New Day. Jack and I had a great time uh, to get away and get refreshed and uh, to really relax and just uh, draw closer to God, draw closer to one another, to hear from God, you know, to move forward. And uh, one of the things I had a chance to do was I caught just a, just a little bit of, uh, you know, Denzel Washington, great actor, and there's a movie he did called The Equalizer. 
And, and it was amazing how people were having so many issues in their life. And he would just, I wouldn't say coming to the rescue, but really defending them. And it was just amazing. He was defending them, the equalizer. Well, today I want to talk to you about an equalizer on a whole nother level, and that's the Holy Spirit. In fact, we're called, he is called the comforter. So let's pray. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this day, dear Lord God, a day that you have made, a day that we will rejoice and be glad in it, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your divine presence, your word, Heavenly Father, which will not return unto you void or empty. It shall accomplish that which you please. It will prosper in our hearts where you're sending in, Father God. That's my declaration over this great congregation, dear Lord God. Father, I thank you that your word is alive. It is alive. And I thank you that we will receive your engrafted word with meekness. We will mix it with faith. We will bring forth fruit, and that fruit shall remain, and there you will, therein you will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, let everyone who, who agree with that say, amen. amen, amen, amen. So turn with me, please, to John chapter 14. We're going to read John 14, verses 16, 17, and 18. And, you know, the, our theme this year is, is strength. Is strength. And, and for so many of you, you needed strength to get through 2020. In fact, it's not just 2020 because it carried over into 2021. You know, Jack and I traveled to Hawaii after uh, I don't know how many weeks of just so, you know, I think I, I know, I know I did so many Bible studies and so many, uh, I mean, sermons and uh, the life group outlines. I got to write those for each week. And then the men, we, the men we meet every Thursday. And, and, um, and I put on Facebook 100. 121 Zoom counseling appointments. Actually, it was close, closer to 200, but I didn't think people would believe me. And so it's been a lot. But through all of that, it, it requires strength because one of the things is that we did not see that coming. I didn't get a prophetic word saying, you know, 2020 would be the year of challenges. 2020, gird your loins up and prepare for it. No, I didn't get any of that. It's just like I'm in Hawaii last year, group of pastors, and all of a sudden we hear that the country is being shut down. And I'm in charge of people here, and I was kind of concerned about America, but then guess what? From Brazil, Pastor Tony, what do we do? Bishop Tony, what do we do? From Zambia, Bishop Tony, what do we do? We just started our church. South Africa, Bishop, what do we do? Other parts of South Africa, what do we do? Philippines, what do we do? It requires strength. It requires strength. But our strength comes from the strengthener who is the Holy Spirit. That's where my strength, how about this? <laughs> this is where my strength comes from. Hallelujah. So John 14, 16, this is Jesus. Now, now here's a situation that he's preparing his disciples for something they're about to encounter. Okay, amen? I live by this adage. It's best to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. I'll say it again. It's best to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. Amen? So Jesus is preparing his disciples. He's about to depart. And I know there was some nervousness, some anxiety. They were, they were anxious about this. And so let's jump into this. 14, 16, John 14, 16, New Living Translation. And I will ask the Father, Abba, hallelujah, and he will give you another advocate. An advocate means comforter, strengthener, somebody stand by, somebody in your, on your side. Um, uh, the best example I can give, uh, a modern day to really bring this home, is Johnny Cochran, the lawyer, okay? I believe O.J. Simpson killed those people. I don't know how you feel about it. I think he did. <laughs> and so he called Johnny Cochran, who was his advocate. Somebody to stand there and defend him and be there with him. And if you did some dirt, okay, and I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. But, but if you did something, you're going to want somebody there to stand for you. And that's, an adv that's a real advocate, okay? And I would give you another advocate who will never leave you. See, the thing about the advocate, the advocate is all about you. I think during this time of political unrest and racial issues and all that, you really saw what is important to people. Their own concerns came out. That's not so with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit cares about you. <clears throat> 17. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Mm, all truth. Hallelujah. Notice he leads. Are you following? He leads. Are you following? The next part says the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. I'm amazed at what's happening here in our state of California. <laughs> the world cannot receive him. They're not interested in him. Because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him 
because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Hmm. But you know him because he lives with you now. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, three in one, Trinity, right there. Jesus is saying, look at me, and you've seen him. Jesus said, look at me, and you've seen the Father. And that's how we need to be. And that's a much later sermon, though. Verse 18, and I love this part. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will not abandon you. I will not abandon you. I will not abandon you. I will come to you. I will not abandon you. So let's get into this. Let's look at verse 16 again. And this is what Jesus said. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, 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 another. This means the same as me. The same as I am. The same as me. Just like me. One of the challenges that we have in America, and, and I, I'm just, I'm in other countries too, I'm sure, but also here because we are so competitive. It is about the individual. We celebrate the, the, the self-made man, if you would. And so what, what happens is that there, there's really not often duplication or replication. Okay, there, uh, people uh, want to come into their own, if you would. And, and Jesus is saying, no, 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 he's not going to be all something different. He's going to be just like me. And for some reason, we have a hard time with that. We have a hard time following or emulating or supporting but he says, I'm going to give you someone just like me. And, he, and, and he's letting them know. And so I want us to understand, because many of us, we're very familiar with Jesus. And in fact, one of the things we lead with is Jesus. We're very familiar with Jesus. And I'm not discounting Jesus. In fact, next Sunday, I'm going to really bless you. I, I, I believe the Lord is going to really bless you with a, with a message about just how he's taking care of us from generation to generation to generation. We're going to see him in action. And you're going to see the similarities, commonality, uh, the inner, inner, inner penetration and alpha team, the perichoresis, the inner dwell, mutual uh, dwelling of the Holy Spirit, of the Father, and of Jesus, how they are three in one. And that is really how we should be, too, because we are made in his image. I challenge some of the people in Hawaii. It's like, how are we imaging God? We're made in his image, right? How are you imaging him? Well, when we look at God, Elohim, all three, the three in one, you look at all three in one, they support one another. Who are you supporting? Who can really say they have my back? We are one and the same. There's oneness, commonality. Jesus said, I'm going to give you someone just like me. Been here three, we've been here three and a half years together, just like me. Another one just like me. And here's the thing. For God so loved the world that he gave, right? And now Jesus is saying, I'm just asking him to give you another. And I think they're hopefully they're understanding that. And he has the same character. He has my same character. In fact, he's not going to leave you. Just like I said, I'm, I will never leave you. Now, if you guys can for a moment imagine, I need you just to imagine the difficulty, the anxiousness that they were experiencing. Think about it for a moment. When you're a little kid, and, 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 and go back to your own children. You know, think about Lauren, and I'm assuming the first time you dropped her off at daycare, it was like, Mommy, no, don't go, Mommy. Mommy's going to come back. No, Mommy has to go to work, baby. Baby, Mommy, mommy take you by some ice cream, you know, <laughs> when we come back. But, but you, yeah, because when there's a departure of, of, of your, the one that's been providing protection and everything, there's some nervousness, some apprehension. I watched Tim Johnson's, you know, my, two of my godsons. And each time as they got older and, and Mandy would leave them with us, that little window, you guys have been to my house, okay? You got the front door and you got the two little windows, right? They would go to that window and plant their heads against it and scream as Mandy went and got in the car. <laughs> and we would all pull them into bed and back into the family room and try to give them, come on, come on, come over, let's play, turn on the cartoons. They weren't having no cartoons. They didn't want nothing to drink, nothing to eat, no candy, no nothing. I want my mama. Want my mama. But then as they got a little bit older, they began to understand that mom is going to come back. Mom has my mom. I don't have to see her 24-7. She doesn't have to be right there. And, 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 and I've learned... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so champion, uh, Tim and Mandy's youngest, he, I remember him clearly learning that and beginning to be okay with us. In fact, he got real okay with us. One, one, he, was, he was maybe two and just learning to talk. He was on the couch. He dozed off on the couch. And he, and he slid off the couch. I, I watched him wake up. And uh, he, he came and he climbed up uh, on, on the, one of the bar stools up at, at the counter, right, the island. 
And Jackie had been sitting there, I'd been sitting there, and we had just finished eating. And he climbed up, I put it, and I helped to help him put it in my seat. He looked over at Jackie, because Jackie had some crumbs, and he calls her Mimi. He looked and said, Mimi, you make a mess. <laughs> so, he had become so comfortable with us at this point. Even thinking about my, God, my uh, grandbaby, you know, it's like uh, um, um, her, her, her mom and dad, Lavelle and Rocille, uh, they did a getaway. And, and they were going to be gone, I think, like four days. And I remember when they left, she says, bye. And she turned to me and said, they're coming back in four days. And each day, this is day one. Papa, this is day one. My mom and daddy coming back. How many days? And she didn't want you to see her, so she would turn her back. Three. <laughs> So if you can imagine the disciples, they were anxious. They were anxious. But Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you another comforter. Look at verse 17. And it's important we understand this because we really, because uh, Sunday, May 23rd is the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell. And on, on May 20, Sunday, May 23rd, we're going to be celebrating the day of Pentecost because I really want everybody to understand the Holy Spirit. And this summer, we're going to really, really bring home the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand who he is. Look at verse 17. It says here, Jesus says, he is the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Watch this. Who leads into all truth. They were familiar with the Spirit. But now the Spirit was going to take on a new role in their lives and in their ministries. And he's like, hey, hey, you, are, you guys, you read the Old Testament. You know, remember how the Holy Spirit would come upon the prophets and he would prophesy? You guys are familiar with the Spirit. But he said this, who leads? I'm going to stop right there for a second. Who leads? Now, if the Spirit is leading, somebody got to be following. Amen? And sometimes if, if you're not being, if you're saying no to the Holy Spirit, what are you saying yes to? <clears throat> Excuse me. What are you saying yes to? Who leads? But now here's the thing. Where is he leading you to? All truth. Some of the relationships you've been in have been a lie. Yeah, been a lie. Been a lie. I remember clearly. I talk real vague <laughs> on this one. I remember clearly just in my mind, I just knew somebody was for me. I'm like, and I remember praying. I mean, I was a young man praying. I pray all the time, but I pray when I wanted something. Yeah. And I wanted her. Lord, that's the one, that's the one. Well, it didn't happen, it didn't work out, it didn't work out. Years later, years later, I mean many years later, I'm married and, and I go, I'm selling life insurance. And so I'm saying everybody I knew had a policy. That's the kind of salesman I was. If you was breathing and you had any kind of association with me, if you ever met me, even in a grocery store, you were going to buy a policy. So I was number one in the nation, okay? <laughs> what joke. But my point is, I went by to see her and her family, sold them a po and was doing a policy. And I, I witnessed some of the most misbehaved, some of the, what, you remember that, that comedian, Baby's Kids? These were some of the baddest kids I'd ever seen. And I remember sitting there saying, hallelujah. See, I wasn't being led in the truth. I was being led by my feelings. And by what was popular and what, what was appealing at that time. Who leads into all truth. The truth. The world cannot receive him. The world, the world. And that's often where we're putting our energies into the world. The world cannot receive him. Why not? Because it isn't looking for him. And doesn't recognize him. I tell you guys, it's one thing to be spirit filled. I'm talking about you guys are speaking tongues like all the time. And every time you think you see something, you just start, da, 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 and that's cool. I'm a tongue talker too. I am spirit filled. Hallelujah. I was praying in the spirit this morning on the way here. And when I first wake up, I get, I'm all for that. But then that's not the end all is being spirit filled. The next thing is to be spirit led. Because he's going to guide me into all truth. Yeah. And the world, the world is like, I don't need the truth. The world needs whatever's popular. What everybody's doing, and you got to be careful. That's why we do the disc assessment here so everybody understands the personality styles because some of you got a, a greater propensity because you're people-oriented. You want to follow the crowd. I've had people get mad at, at Sunday service. It hasn't happened here, but when we were at the school, somebody came to me and like, they weren't lifting their hands, Pastor. I'm like, why do you care? But I understood why they care because they're easily influenced by others, and what others do matters to them, and you got to manage that. And usually it's coming from a place of acceptance, so I need to be around what's happening. 
I watch people leave our church and go to churches that are popular and happening. But you don't know how, how adulterous and, and, and the homosexual spirit and, and the fornication, all that is going on in that church. You don't even know what that pastor and his wife is dealing with. You don't even know that they. they you. But it's popular. It's popular. And the world, mm -mm, not looking for him. The world is good. And it's like this, this is, mm -mm, okay, watch this. But Je Jesus is telling the disciples, but you know him. And the way you know him, because, hey, he's just like me. Because he lives with you now. Me, God, Holy Spirit, one, one. And later, later, there's going to come a shift, and we're going to deal with that starting on the 23rd. It, he's going to be in you. It's going to be an infusion with the Holy Spirit. In fact, turn with me, please, to John 8, 44. John 8, 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. I want to show you this one in the King James Version, though. Now, here's the thing about the Holy Spirit. Remember, we just read he's going to lead us into all truth, okay? Now, I'm, I'm, look at this. It's truth versus fiction. When I used to work in the Anaheim Library, I did that for 16 years. Books, 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 books. And I was cool with the. I didn't really like the job, but I love books, okay? In fact, Jackie would always tease me. We'll be walking on the mall, and I'm telling you, the best store ever on the planet at Barnes & Nobles, okay? Hallelujah, glory to God. God lives at Barnes and Nobles. Hallelujah. I can just feel anointing when I walk into Barnes and Nobles. Okay, I like books. Okay, I'm, I'm, I like to read. It's just how I am. You, you just, I, I, 99% of the time, you see me, I got a book with me. Okay? Bishop, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, we're going to meet, but Bishop, I'm running late. Not a problem, because I got a book. <laughs> okay? I got a book. But my point is this, is that in the library, you got fiction. People just make up stories. And those are very popular. I mean, very popular. A lot of the movies have a screen, uh, 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 adapted from a book becomes a screenplay, right? So I get it. Nothing wrong with fiction. But the enemy loves fiction. The Holy Spirit loves truth. Let me show you the difference here. John 8, 44. Watch this. And Jesus is talking to the Pharisees who were supposed to be godly people. Watch this. Ye are of your father the devil. Hmm. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. He doesn't live in the truth. Watch this. Because there is no truth in him. I need you guys to let, just let that, that settle in for a second. There is no truth in him. There is. That's scary. That's, that's, I mean, think about it for a moment. There is no truth in him. There is, there is no truth. Now, the thing, the way, the way we fall victim, if you would, is that because it feels right, it feels okay, and nothing happens right away, so we, we just, just. Fall hook, line, and sinker. And we're good, we're good. Oh, it's okay, this must be all right because ain't nothing happened. But something's going to happen, and it's going to be much bigger. This is what the enemy does. He will wait, he will wait, he will wait, he will wait, he will wait. until Because he's not just interested in taking you down. He wants what we call collateral damage, okay? That was a bombing this morning I just read about in Afghanistan. And, and there was a, a, quite a number of young teenage girls that were killed in this bombing. Collateral damage. So, you know, you got the Taliban, Al-Qaeda over there. You got ISIS. You got all of that going on over there. You got Americans. You got Russians. You got everybody and your mom over there, okay? And, 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 uh, and, and so everybody's trying to take out something, and, and, and it's an ungodly place, if you would. And, there's, and they were targeting somebody, but then the girls were collateral damage. That's what the enemy does in your life. Yeah, because, see, a lot of you guys, your children have a purpose. And so he's going to wait and get you, and then it's going to impact your kids. That's what happened. I recognize in my life, in my wife's life, I can understand how the enemy has been working in the lives of people around us so they can thwart us. It's not like Tony Dunn is all in a bag of chips, but he get me, and then that hits, impacts Africa, that impacts South America. You see how he works. He's very strategic, but there's no truth in him. So that's why I got to make a decision that, so when, when, when the enemy comes in, and, and let me keep reading, watch this. When he speaketh a lie, first of all, he speaks. Now, the Holy Spirit speaks. We're going to talk about that next week. When he speaks... When he speaks, when he speaks, he's speaking, he's speaking. I need you to understand it for a second. The devil talks. <clears throat> Jesus has a theme. Theme, just throughout the New Testament, I mean, throughout the Gospels and in Revelation. He says that you have ears to hear. Oh, we have ears. Well, what are we listening to? As the enemy, he's seductive, not sexually seductive, but it's whatever's conducive to whatever we believe to be true. And then what happens is all he needs to do, he does, he just, okay, if this is the direction you're supposed to be going in, he will just push you just a little bit off. 
And sin really means to miss the mark. How do we miss the mark? When he speaketh. Now, when he speaks, he speaks a lie. It's a lie. Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. The enemy, the enemy, the devil, is going to lead us into a lie. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So we got these competing voices. Got these competing voices. One is the truth. One is a lie. Now, if you don't get into the word, and then allow the word to get into you, you're most likely going to be leave the lie because it's going to be laced with your feelings, your emotions, and what's pleasing and pleasurable to you. That's why I wanted the other girl. I thought she was fine. Had external beauty, but heart and mind just jacked up. And, oh, that sounded bad, huh? Well, well, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, just <laughs> prayerfully things have gotten better. Hallelujah. But because... I just remembered another one. No, I remember another time. Going back to, okay, yeah. So I remember once going to, um, um, we, we were little kids and we went to, um, what was it called? Um, Disneyland. And uh, we was all excited. And it was the first time I ever asked a girl, I, uh, I took a date. I had a girl go with us. We were old enough, I think eighth grade, where we started asking girls to go with us at Disneyland, right? Took a girl with me, and it was so embarrassing. She embarrassed me in front of everybody. She sure did. But the reason I was excited to go with her, because I knew, in fact, one of the older guys in high school said, dude, you got a star. She's the prettiest girl around here. And I felt good. So my whole ego, my essence, and my self-esteem, it was all that. As an eighth grader, that's a lie, okay, so my self-esteem was based on her looking good and the other fellas approving of me. Eighth grader started. Eighth grader started. He speaks a lie. He speaks a lie. Those competing voices. One is the truth, the other is a lie. It's a lie. So if you don't know the word, if you don't understand who you are in Christ, which I had to learn, so then my identity was tied into what the, what the fellows was thinking. The fellows. I've heard, not, not recently, but before, it's like bros before hoes. First of all, don't you ever call no woman a hoe. And your wife comes before anybody on this planet. But you don't know that because you listen to rappers and you don't listen to the word. Well, you don't know what's going on in the hood. It don't have to be like that. That's another message. One is the truth, the other is a lie. The world cannot receive him. The world isn't even looking for him. So why even deal with the world? Second part. The world doesn't recognize him because turn with me, please, to 2 Corinthians 4, 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. King James Version again, okay? Watch this. Um, actually, we're going to New Living on this one. New Living. New Living is fine. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. It says here, Satan. Satan. Y'all know Satan. Who is the God of what? And the world can't receive him because Satan has this world. Satan has this world. This age. And that's what this word, word world means. This age. So think about the age that we're living in now. What's permissible? What have the courts decided is Okay. I don't care what party you belong to. Both of them got demonic elements all laced up in them. So don't even start with me on that. Yeah. I would do more than hurt your feelings if you really want to debate about that. <laughs> Who is the God of this age? This age. This age. And watch this. He's blind in the minds. That word minds is your mental perception of your thoughts. He plays mind games. God, I need you to see this. He plays mind games of those who that don't believe. So anybody don't believe, I'm sorry, I can't get with you. Now, if I got to work with you, collaborate with you, and go to work with you every day, that's, that's, I, yeah, I can, I can live among you. But in terms of in some really like deep collaboration where we, no, 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 no. I'm not being unequally yoked with somebody who is really being led by the devil. God, I need you all to see this. That's why we need to be led by the Holy Spirit because everybody is being led by the enemy. He's blinded your minds. It's the spirit that's going to leave you in all truth. Let's go to John 14, 18. Let's wrap this up. I love this part here. I love this part about Jesus. He says, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. And in King James, it says, I will not leave you comfortless. But the word comfortless in Greek means Leave as an orphan. 
I'm going to leave you as an orphan. Orphans have a fear of abandonment. Fear of abandonment. You can be in a family and still feel abandoned. And what happens is, is when you develop this, to have this fear of abandonment, you do everything you can to try to avoid pain. And pain comes from relationships. So therefore, I disengage in relationships. I don't trust. 50 some odd percent of first, ma- of first marriages end in divorce. 70% of second marriages end in divorce. Because what happened, you go through that first marriage jacked up. I mean, you get injured, and then you enter that second marriage. But see, in that first marriage, you, you made some declarations. Some inner vows. I will never, based on whatever happened with that first husband or first wife, you go to the second one because she fine and he fine, you lonely, and, you know, you got an itch that you won't scratch and all that. Okay, you, you, you're going to try it again. You're going to try it again. You're going to try it again, but you're one foot in, one foot out. Seventy percent of those end in divorce because of what happened before. Somebody leaves you before, you got a fear of being abandoned again. So then I won't fully engage my heart because I'm going to do everything I can to avoid pain. I'm my whole, my number one um, 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 intention in life is pain avoidance. I'm trying to avoid. And many of us, we live in, a, in just a state of avoidance. When we're called to interact, interconnect, we all got a special work we're called to do. We're supposed to be united and as one. But we end up as orphans. And this is what Jesus is addressing. He's like, I'm not going to leave you in that state because the state is dangerous. And you open for the enemy. So I got to comfort you through this. Watch this. 83% of the men in prison right now, 83% of the men in prison right now, 83% of the men in prison were in a false secure system. 83%. 80% of females in prison right now. They can't, at some point, they spend time in a system. Sometime in a group home, sometime. Why is that? I want you to think about prisoners, even when they get out. The difficulty they have in engaging others, the pain that they carry, the stuff that they suffer. They don't trust anybody. Jack and I, as many of you guys know, we work with uh, TAYS, transitional age youth, those that are transitioning out of foster care into adulthood. They don't trust. They don't trust. They don't trust. And pain is the enemy's, that's, that's the enemy's plan. If I can cause you pain, and I'll, I'll, I'll have your mind for the rest of of your life, and you will live in fear. Fear of what has been, fear, you want to avoid whatever's been done for you, to you before. I never want that to happen again. I'm going to do everything I can so I won't experience that. Well, if you're living in fear, that's not faith. That's why Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. I want you to think about what he said. He said, I came to preach the good news to the poor. There are some poor people that would never even try to be rich. Or they even try to be better. They're terrified. Then he says, I came to heal the brokenhearted. All in Luke 4, 18. I came to heal the brokenhearted. Then he said, I came to bring recovery, to set the captives free. What's he talking about, slaves? No. The enemy has captured our minds. He tells us that. Got our minds. Then he said to bring recovery of sight to the blind. See, that, and I used to think like, yeah, he laid hands on the blind people and they could see. No, 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 no. That word blind right there is, is about people that has given up their vision and dreams and hopes for life. They don't even hope anymore. I don't trust anymore. I don't dream anymore. I don't, I don't even try anymore. It's, it's been so bad now. We, we've had 20 years of a crazy marriage and, and, and ain't nothing in it. No, 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 no. It, you know what? And I mean this with all due respect. I'm having the best time of my life right now. First 10, 12 years of me and Jackie's marriage, it was crazy as I don't know what. But we had to hope again, believe again, trust again, and it took courage. It took faith. It takes strength. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're spirit-led and you do what the Spirit says, there's, that's the game changer. That's the game changer. So, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. He's given us the Holy Spirit. And I want to challenge you, especially over the coming weeks, get in a life group because we're really going to look at the Holy Spirit. I know some of you, I know the Holy Spirit. No, you know feelings because what we do in church, whoo, the Spirit was moving. No, that was your emotions. You just like that song. That's your favorite song. That's my, just, it's the same as when a song comes on the radio. You've been in a store shopping. Hey, that's my jam. <laughs> it's the same emotions. 
You go to high school reunion, see that old boyfriend. Ooh, girl, there he is. <laughs> Just your emotions. Spirit will guide you into all truth. Enemy speaks a lie. Yes. Brothers and sisters, let's really learn about the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Bow your heads, please. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you, first of all, for the Holy Spirit. Jesus, you said, you said, you said, you said that you would not leave us as orphans. And, Lord, I know that orphan spirit is so prevalent throughout the body of Christ. Many have not embraced Heavenly Father. They have not embraced the Holy Spirit fully. And, Father, I just pray for a spirit of wisdom and understanding relative to the Holy Spirit, dear Lord God, that we here at New Day fully understand, fully understand the operation, the life of the Spirit, Heavenly Father, and life in the Spirit, dear Lord God, that we truly are a Spirit-led ministry, Father, in Jesus' name. Now, there are those out there now that you know, talked about the Holy Spirit today, but you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you know about him, but you don't know him. And I want to give you that opportunity to get to know the whole, I mean, know Jesus Christ as your Lord and, as your Lord and Savior. You say, Bishop, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, if you were to die today, where's your spirit going to go? Where's your spirit going to go? If you were to die today, where's your spirit going to go? I want you to stop and think about that for a moment because it's really one or two places. It's either going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. It's one of the two. Where's it going to be? Where's it going to be? And see, it's predicated on the decision that you make today. On the decision that you make today. Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And when we speak about that life more abundantly, it's not about material things. I really want you guys to be clear on this, okay? He's talking about eternal life. A life living in the spirit here and in eternity. If there was something you could do on your own, and I'm sure you're a great person. You're probably you're the best one in your family. I, got it. I, I, I really believe that. See, the problem is we've all sinned and come falling short of God's glory. So here it is. You need Jesus as your Savior. He came and he died so that you may live. So if that's you right now, follow me in this prayer with your whole heart. Say, dear God, I come before you recognizing my need for Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord. I believe that he died and that he rose again. For the Bible says, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, I will be saved. And so I believe and I confess. So, Father, I thank you for welcoming me into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer sincerely and from your heart, you're now saved. And right now, Minister Asha is going to come and give you some information about how to take that next step. Amen. My wife and I, Jackie, my wife Jackie and I love you and we thank God for you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Bishop Tony, for that powerful word. I know that sometimes life can seem difficult and it can seem like it's hard to not conform to the pattern of this world because we want to be liked and we want to be popular. But God is saying, that is not my way and you need my way. My way is the only way. So if God has tugged on your heart this morning, if God is saying, it's time to say yes. If the Holy Spirit is saying it's time to say yes, if Jesus is saying it is time to say yes, then take that leap of faith and, and say yes. It is time. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. So say yes right now. And if you said yes to any of other of those invitations that Bishop Tony presented, please text us. All you have to do is text us at New Day Connect. And then the number is 94000. We're waiting for you. We are looking for you. We will walk by this by side with you. We will pray with you. We will talk you through it. Please reach out to us. It is time to continue to give with our tithing and our offering. 
Luke 6, 38 says, Give and you will receive. Your gifts will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Amen. We have scripture that is constantly reminding us of the importance of giving, church. So let's make it a priority in our life, a number one priority. And we have three ways to give this morning. We try to make it simple. The first is by texting New Day Corona to 77977. The second is by giving online to newdaycorona.org. And all you have to do is click give. And the last is by mailing in a check to 1114 West Ontario Avenue, Corona, California, 92882. We have an offering confession here at New Day. You will see it presented on your screen, but we also want you to go ahead and say this offering confession with us. Ready? Father, we honor you as we present to you your tithes and our offerings. You are the authority over all we have. We give in obedience to you, O God, who causes all grace to abound towards us. For we have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. There is no lack in our lives. For we give to the poor and support the work of missionaries. Therefore, as we sow our financial seed, we thank you for the harvest of wisdom to manage our financial affairs, financial favor, oil and mineral rights, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, favorable settlements and rebates, the return of what's lost or stolen, scholarship and grants, increased sales and commissions, the miracle of debt cancellation, favorable financial surprises, every bill and every debt paid. We declare that we not only have enough, that we have more than enough. We declare that we have enough to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole earth. For we are blessed to be a blessing, and we will care for the widows and orphans. In Jesus' name, amen. that you're with us. 
We pray that you have an amazing rest of your day or evening or night, whatever time it is for you. But let's pray out first. Heavenly Father, again, we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. As we take this next step in saying yes to you, yes to the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, give us the strength that we need. Give us the guidance that we need. Give us the wisdom that we need. Give us the tools that we need. Hallelujah. We need it all, and we need you, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for this word this morning, such a powerful word that is fitting for anyone in any one season, Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day.